Is this thing on? Hey, is anybody out there? <laughs> What's happening, my friends? Welcome back to Road Reality. We will eventually get moving. Right now, we're at a red light. But today is a very important video, and this is take two. I actually stalled the bike and missed the shift to second gear on the first take. Hey, cool. Green light, and I stalled. Ha! <laughs> And I missed the second shift. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, but a friend of mine is in distress. I was going to say in trouble, but he's not. And it really determines, it's really determined by what your definition of friend is. I've never actually met this person in real life, but I feel that I've gotten to know him by watching his videos here on YouTube. And he goes by the name of Kraken's Garage and Adventures. His name is Eric. And I want to talk about him and Moto Mengi, my Kaylee 7, and a few others today on what is sure to be a very serious video from a not very serious person. That would be yours truly. But really, this topic comes up about once every six months. And stick with me here, it's all tied together, I think, at least insofar as my head is concerned. Now, also, I'm probably going to get some facts wrong, dates wrong. It's going to be the Mandela effect all over again. Wow, that Accord really was just driving along in the center lane. OK. But mind you, I'm on a motorcycle doing 35, 40 mile an hour, trying to remember something that happened 22 hours ago. And it, it's all going to be a little fuzzy, right? But it all does tie together. So stick with me. I promise it's worth the watch. At least worth what you paid for it. So let's start with Eric. Eric put out a video sort of lamenting the fact that his stats are down. He's not growing like he once was. His view counts are down. And brother, I feel you. I, I really do. I, I feel your pain on that. If I was to only make videos to get to 100 or 1,000 views, I'd make about 10% of my videos, maybe less. I think at last count, I had 37 over 1,000 views. But here I am, day in and day out, still recording content, still dodging trucks, still trying to make the best videos I can. And we'll get into that too in a minute. What's that, a hubcap? No, a piece of paper. Jeez, there's like detritus all over the roads. But I'm gonna try to stay focused on today's video, focused. But Eric was lamenting, he was going, hey, what, what did I do wrong? What, what do you guys not like? Which is paying true fan service. And I cannot knock him for wanting to please his viewers, at least through his content. Huh, that's a really bad joke, but I'm leaving it in. We're gonna leave in a lot of the flubs that I normally edit out today because I think it's important to show that I am not the polished individual you all think I am. But if I remember, more on that later too. So Eric was asking his viewers what they wanted to see in a video. He was uh, he was kind of saying, hey, I, I put a lot of effort and research into some of these videos and tell a story and I'm not getting the views I thought I would get and we're not growing. And I gotta tell you, Eric, I love your videos. The ghost dog, the, hey, you know, good moto morning. I love every bit. It's his style, it's his branding. And I'm not going to knock him for it. I mean, I do my own stupid stuff in relation. His stuff is pretty smart compared to mine. And he does a ton of research for his videos, and he's a much better storyteller than I am. But I continue doing this because I really enjoy it. And that gets to the heart of the matter. I've made videos on this in the recent past where I say, hey, if you're not enjoying it, stop doing it. And Eric is taking a break. He's not stopping YouTube, but he is taking a break. And I know of plenty of others that are also taking a break. Oh, hey, not as bad. Okay, good. Uh, and they're, they're doing a sabbatical from YouTube. YouTube is a fickle mistress. It, it's got, I was watching a Channel Makers video last night. Nate from Channel Makers was saying that there's like 500 hours for every minute of time. So 500 hours of new video gets uploaded every minute of real time to YouTube. That is a mind-boggling statistic. There are so many viewers on YouTube, so many creators on YouTube, lots of creators, 
And the fact that you decided to come visit some on his riding around on his Harley and watch his video, I am greatly appreciative of that. And we all as content creators need to keep that in mind. Shocker, you went left in the left in the straight lane. Yeah, son. And this guy in front of me is on his phone. We gotta watch out. They're everywhere. They're all out to get us. But I've seen plenty of YouTube content creators go by the wayside, they quit because they just weren't enjoying it anymore, and good for them. They're putting their mental health, because this is a mental health issue, they're putting their mental health above all else. And in today's climate, not the physical climate, which is beautiful today, it's about 86 degrees, but in today's uh, other world, uh, mental climate, I don't know. I'm at a loss for words as usual. But it's important to remember that self-care is the number one care because if you don't take care of your other yourself, you can't take care of others. See, I flubbed that line, but I left it in. Which sort of brings me back to Eric. He's gonna take this break and he's gonna, I guess he's gonna regroup. And I left a comment on his video last night wishing him well and telling him to keep at it. And he's doing a great job because I truly believe he does a great job at creating his videos. But there are other things that need to be taken into account. One of which you can look at your stats and see, if, you're, if you are a creator, you can look at your stats and see what part of your video is being watched and what part is not being watched. And you can make your own assumptions from there as to what to cut and what to add back in. At the end of the day, you have to be happy with your product because every video is a product, it's a commodity. And it's competing with thousands of others. So you have to do something that makes you stand out. Well, Eric stands out. He's got almost 4,000 subscribers. Congrats early on 4K. I know you're gonna make it there soon, Eric. But you also have to be true to yourself because I've seen people buy bikes for content. They change up what kind of videos they make for content and they're feeding the algorithm. I don't subscribe to that because I use this as a processing platform where I get to process the thoughts in my head and enjoy a beautiful day out on the road like today and bring you something that is hopefully thought provoking or makes you laugh. And I'm gonna to touch on that sort of in some other videos that I've already recorded, but today is August 16th and I'm just doing this one and I'm gonna shove it right there in the schedule. Ah, right down the schedule throat. You're going in before the other stuff because I think it's important and I've said that like five times, I'm not done saying it. It is important. We always tout that the motor vlogging community is a welcoming and comfortable place to be with lots of helpful friends. So who am I if not someone who is going to help out another motor vlogger? So Eric, I hope you're watching this. If somebody sees this and doesn't see a comment from Eric, then somebody prompt him. I don't know how to do the tag thingy on a video to tag another channel. Other people have tagged me and I don't know how they do it. And this, this tree growth is killing me here. I've got to make my left. There we go. Okay, good. So we have to support each other. And that's what I aim to do in most of my videos. Most of my videos, I put a shout out or a word of encouragement to try to build up the other motor vloggers because there's a lot of them and they're better than me. They, they really are. I, I don't claim to be the expert in almost anything except the figuring out goofy ways to test my equipment. <laughs> so moving on, there's also the time of year. Here in the United States, we're, it's the middle of August. It's high time for vacations and people getting away and getting ready for school. And I don't think they have as much time to watch YouTube as maybe they did prior months. Also, Sturgis just happened. You know, people are still putting out VAM content. VAM 22 was a thing. I aim to go next year. And there, there's plenty of biker rallies going on and sort of the end of the season, I guess. So there's kind of this combat, not combat, but there's this uh, competition. Yeah, that's it. There's a competition for people's time and maybe they're not into watching stories right now you know I, I put out a foodie story this morning and it got minus one subscribers did it bother me Eh, maybe a tiny bit if i'm being honest with myself sure it bothered me 
but not as much as you'd think. I was like, yep, whatever. I don't care. I'm still going to keep making the content I enjoy because I get the fun of editing it and then the engagement with the user or viewer rather. They are users. Do I have a flat tire? I feel like I have a flat tire. We're going to have to pull over. Yep, definitely going to pull over right here. What? I think so. I just felt a little wobbly and I was like, I got to check my tires. You didn't see anything, did you? All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. What a nice guy, huh? Nothing there. Back tire doesn't look low. Oh, well. So I was talking about my, uh, my foodie story, losing a subscriber. I, you know, the videos that get me the most views, they pay, right? Because I'm monetized, right? And I, I collect a couple bucks from it. Maybe I'll go into it in the future, maybe not. But at the same time, is it too sunny? No, we're good. But at the same time, the engagement with the user, or God, I keep saying user. The engagement with the viewer is what really motivates me. And seeing people like 602 North and Moto Mengi, and we'll get back to Mengi in a minute. And Mike Haley 7 commenting and stuff. And even Mike Haley 7 sending me the little clips I use, you know, where he's, he's laughing at something. <laughs> I just can't stop laughing at it. Yep, that was one there. <laughs> he's laughing at me like, what did you think something's wrong with your bike for? Don't you have TPMS? I got a gold wing. It has TPMS. Yeah, well, I don't have TPMS, Mike. Sorry, not sorry. But that is... Uh, if I have one word of wisdom regarding that, it's to take the people that watch your content regularly and build those relationships because everybody else is just in it for some information. They're going to move on. You know, you can get 10,000 views on a new bike review or whatever, and it's great for drawing people in to learn your personality, but don't count on all of them staying. They come, they go. Mike Kelly 7 mentioned to me or in a video somewhere that he lost subscribers and gained subscribers when he switched bikes. Like people were that brand loyal. I literally could not care less what somebody's riding. If their personality is great, I'm watching. If their personality is shit, I'm not watching. Let's go back on the road. All right, everything feels better now. I must have hit a bump in the road or something. But people come, people go. Ernie Hatmaker. Ernie Hatmaker is a great example. And I don't use anybody's names lightly in this video. I only mean to bring up uh, certain people that have had a profound impact on me as a moto vlogger. And Ernie is one because she got me like 15 subscribers from doing her Sunday shout out videos. She's a homesteader out in the Pacific Northwest. Great person, great videos. Your side of the road, please. Thank you. And she didn't show up in my comments for like a month and a half. And then she showed up and she watched one. So there's a little message YouTube gives you and it says, your click-through rate is low on this one. Not all topics get uh, all the views, something like that. And it's true, it's true. You can put out you know, something on a Harley Davidson product one day and something on a Kawasaki product the next day and get completely different results from two videos. Your audience, as YouTube has deemed fit to send your way through suggested videos or whatever, they're gonna watch what they're gonna watch and they're not gonna watch all your videos. And you have to be okay with that. I think you have to be okay with that. So, Eric, again, if you're watching this, I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. For all the people who are not Eric, I hope that if you're a creator, you understand um, a little bit more about what goes on in, in our world. And if you're not a creator, you, you certainly should understand a lot more of what goes on in our little world. Because it's a great little world. Everybody should be motovlogging. <laughs> That's my personal stance on it. Even though I'd probably get like a tenth of my viewership if nine other people decided to go do it. Ah, them the brakes, right? Oh, and I forget which way to go now, shoot. Oh, we gotta make a left. And we're gonna get onto Springfield Road now. I cut a little section out there. I did, I know I did. But I rode on this for my 300 subscriber shout out video in which I started out with a Moto Mengi-esque uh, we're gonna do a road spotlight. So it's a good time to talk about Moto Mengi. And so now this is a response to a response to a video I did. Mengi went out and did a response to my Are Moto Vloggers a Rare Breed video. 
and he brought up that I was a character. And me being a character on the bike is a byproduct of a few things, one of which is my give a f meter is like pegged at zero. If I think a video is gonna be remotely entertaining, I will post it, okay? I will edit it, I will post it. I am months behind. I've got like 20 videos in editing right now. I got some ones I'm excited for, some that are kind of regular vlogs, but I think they'll be either thought provoking or entertaining. So I'm gonna post those too. And then I just, I've become this character. This is the real me. My first hundred videos or so were so polished. Basically, I was trying not to piss anybody off, whether it be a specific rider or somebody in particular. I, that's not how I want to be portrayed. But as my give a f meter got pegged to zero, like, hey, John, you're only getting like 40 views on a video. It doesn't really matter if you're doing X, Y or Z. If you enjoy it, just do it, which led to a much higher enjoyment a lower amount of editing and a higher output of video quality, in my opinion. And people seem to react well to that. You know, I leave in certain things and people respond to it. So I leave them in some more. We these corners are a lot of fun, aren't they? You have to a lot better when your suspension is set up, even if the, even if it's the stock suspenders. So Mengi, I might be a character, but I'm your old buddy, John. <laughs> And yes, I love his term classic versus modern moto vlogger. And I'll leave a link in the, in the description below to Mengi's response to my video. Maybe he'll make a response to this. It'll be a response, response, response video. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. It, I, you know, YouTube really is just a giant Zoom call. And I wanna make a left here. I know that much. It's like I'm making this giant ass freaking circle. And I, I guess I kinda am, because I just went the long way around to get to a spot that's a lot closer and easier to get to, but it gave me more recording time to finish this video up in a way that I think uh, it befits it. Plus, this is just beautiful. Is this not just a little gorgeous back road? And within two miles of me, there's people stuck in traffic. I can't see a damn thing. Ooh, that mottled sunlight that my Kelly 7 loves so much. But I happen to love motor vlogging, and that's why I keep doing it. Every once in a while, I come up with a great idea that turns into quite a few views and all that sort of stuff. But my general views, I get 40, 50, maybe 60 views on a video and that's half decent, you know? I know I'm not the world's best at this and I don't have the cleanest audio and, you know, insert whatever disparaging remark you want about me there. I don't really care. I'm gonna keep making videos as long as it's fun. And returning just for a moment to taking a break, you guys know, because now this video is unpolished. What road is this? Do I, I don't, I don't, do I need to turn here? I don't know. We're going to go straight to hell with it. Oh, clear, clear. Good. So returning to this thought of taking a break, I take breaks all the time. I record so much i have a like i said i got a whole bunch of videos in the editor and you know what i take breaks all the time i will take a week or two off here and there just watch other people's stuff i get inspiration you know my community uh, poll that i put up people ask where do i get my inspiration or they wanted subjects to talk about other moto vloggers sometimes give me inspiration and i talk about that in a video i recorded a few days ago over the weekend but I haven't edited it or put it up yet. <laughs> I left out a id in one word, added it to the next. Go, John, words. But in reality, I'll take a week off here and there, go on vacation, just sit around and do nothing, drink coffee and build Lego. Because I do have fun with it, but you know, you record so many videos and then you edit a bunch of videos, you need a break. Everybody needs a weekend, and I get my weekends off during the weeks when I'm not uh, editing. So that's the truth about road reality. And honestly, I have no idea what this video is gonna be titled. I have no idea what the thumbnail is gonna look like. It'll probably be some goofy ass face I'm making while riding. But I wanted to give some words of encouragement to specific people 
in this video because too often we as moto bloggers are thought of as a commodity because our product is a commodity, but the people behind the camera are not a commodity. We're individuals with lives, we have jobs. This is a hobby. I record on my commute so often because it's the time I have to record. Uh, the time I have to edit, it's dark out and nobody needs to watch that. Uh, ooh, no, not this one. We go straight across this one. Gotcha, boss, gotcha. Although that looks pretty over there somewhere. Look at that, you can see way off. There's like a town, huh? But we're gonna hide on the, the side roads here while we finish this one up in quick succession. So that is, uh, you know what? And I just lost my train of thought. Dag, nab it. I knew if I let my stream of consciousness get broken for 30 seconds, that it would be broken permanently. And here we are. I was talking about, yes, commodity. So I don't, I don't want people to think of motovloggers as a commodity. Classic motovlogs are not a commodity. The informational videos are, and if you want to change my mind, do so in the comments below. Can I get a break here, boss? I need to get out in traffic. But really, the the stories, and you're, you're getting somebody's sometimes very vulnerable, deep thoughts. And that's, you know, it's something that I, I shy away from. Uh, trying to be not vulnerable in videos. I shy away from being more vulnerable in my videos and discussing some actually very poignant topics. But since Eric came out and did his video, I felt compelled to respond to him. And that's what we're gonna finish this video up with is go out there, have your fun. And if it is fun, keep doing it. If it's not fun, stop doing it because life is too damn short to really worry about what unnamed individuals think. If you are a content creator, you know that you have a certain subset of your followers or subscribers, what have you, who will watch every one of your videos. But their time is limited too, and there's a big competition for their time. So you have to be cognizant of that and realize they're not gonna watch all of your videos. They're gonna try though, they will try and you have to do it sort of for you. So those are the words I'm gonna leave you with today. I hope this video, well, I hope it gets a lot of traction, honestly, because we don't talk about mental health enough on, uh, on YouTube, and it's starting to become an issue for a lot of people, I think. I think a lot of people are getting burnt out with it. They're either not putting out as much or any videos, and they're, uh, they're, they're not taking the time for themselves. So with that, I'm gonna go take some time for myself and ride home. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. And I do thank you for sitting through probably what was a 20 minute video with no dance off, no dance break, and one short little, did I flatten a tire jump off, you know, and no music. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave it a like button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care of yourselves so you can take care of others. That's the parting words. <laughs>